saw tell us about this new release there is the new m11 yeah yeah uh, we got the m11 here okay and um, when is when is it gonna be launched and um, hopefully we will have this available in spain this month later this month later this month let's yeah. hope that's true and tell us some of the main things that make the m11 great i mean what things are uh, that fio has really pushed forward with this release mm -hmm. so with the m11 we're using the uh, new sensor chip sno 7a72 so uh, compared to its pre uh, the old S5 third gen, is, uh, which is running on the SRK31AA CPU chip, it's run much faster. Right now, it could you know, you can even compare it to your normal cell phone right now. So it's run faster. You can use any app on it without any problem. And the design overall is using the old design of the S5 third gen, but it's being upgraded. Uh, we have third three port here which you can see is the 4.4 balance output and 2.5 balance output and 3.5 single end output. Does it have digital out as well? Yeah, it doesn't have the digital, digital out. Yeah. Not digital out. Yeah, it's not like the S, S7 Mark II. Yeah. Okay. It only has the light out and code S out, not the optical one. Okay, and then it's USB-C, yep. right? Type-C, yeah. Type-C, uh, fast charging maybe? Yeah, fast charging. Yeah, it has the MTK uh, quick charge and the uh, QC 2.0 which is compatible, which if you have two kind of uh, adapter, you can use it with that. Okay, yeah. I also see that, you know, you mentioned the CPU, mm -hmm. uh, something that helps the product be smoother. Mm -hmm. I also see that this is a huge improvement of, in RAM as well, right? From yeah. one to three. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, the S5 third gen has one, only one RAM, but right now it has three RAM. So, which means you can use like, uh, you can do multiple tasks on this one without any delay and stuff like that, lacking stuff like that. So I also see from the specs that DSD, uh, it's uh, actually works on DSD. That DSD two five six yeah, works natively now. Yeah, right now. So the interface is much, much, much better than yeah. X five three. Something that people were saying that you know that X five three was a bit laggy. Yeah, that's something that disappears. Can you can you actually show us a bit of the play a bit with the interface so yeah, sure. actually people can see the speed. Actually, we are using like the different uh, gesture operation right now. As you can see, swiping from the up is like multiple tasks. And swiping from the side is like back. It's like a phone. A new gesture, all gesture co uh, cooperation, operation. And you can see from this our newest design, the Fire Music app. And you can see that it's so fast. It, it doesn't have any lag or something. And you can see go in the here, you can see all kind of apps. You can install any of them without any problem. Can, so, you can you tell us a bit of like app installation or also what streaming applications are actually? Yeah, uh, it's running on Open Android, so there's no there's no problem to install any kind of uh, streaming app on the market right now. So, uh, Tidal, Spotify, stuff like that, all working fine. Yeah. So you can download directly from how do you download the app? Is it like a app store thing going on? Or? Um, we don't have an app store, but an APK? we are planning to you know have our own file market, which you can find all the streaming app on that. You can download it from that and install it on the uh, M11. Installation will be through APKs. Right? Yeah, yeah. APK is another way to you know install it if you like. Okay. Okay. So I think. Uh, battery life would be yeah around 12 to 13 hours and yeah in terms of amplification that's something that's uh people are very interested like what how much is it amp uh it's around five five hundred ninety nine euro in your peer market right now yeah but the final price is that is decided by our, our distributor so okay. yeah and in terms of amplification to drive headphones how, uh, what sort of headphones can it drive, the, the M11? Uh, basically, I would say that most of the uh, headphones on the market could be tried easily. So, if you're not using the big headset like the which light is about like 600 ohms, that would be fine for it. Okay, so even maybe Planet Magnetics? Uh, yeah, it should be working just fine. But I will recommend you guys to, you know, actually try it in the store if you have the chance. Yeah, okay. it's the FH7. So the price points of it is also the same as the M11. 
but you can see that it's a five driver product IEM one dynamic four balance amateurs uh, it has the 13 point says very beryllium you know direct so driver it's a, it's a very rare material and yeah. it is uh, very strong but very thin I mean very was a very light I think yes it, it could have better sound from the driver and you can see from here you also have the detachable filters here. We will come with the package that we will have three filters to detach it's detachable and you will change it for different sound signatures. How will you actually many of the customers will say actually how is this different from the FH5? What does it bring over the FH5? You know, uh, it is it's gonna be nearly double the price. So I think you said that the, actually the driver, mm -hmm. the dynamic one is gonna be beryllium, yeah. which is a very rare material that's actually using very high-end yeah. engineers and also in high-end speakers as well. Mm -hmm. But what uh, an extra driver as well, I guess. So, or you say that the sound quality is gonna be much better than the yeah, FH5? Yeah, the sound stage of the FH7 is way much bigger than the FH5. Okay. When you put it on, you can actually feel the differences. And also, we have the new cable for the FH7. So the cable of the FH7 is different from the FH5, which could, uh, could provide like better sound for you. If you, yeah. Uh, is, is this any cable that your team is also releasing as well to buy yeah. separately? I think it's 100 euro, 100 something. Yeah, somewhere around that. Uh, okay, so we have the end. LC 2.5, 3.5 and 4.4D series cable, which is uh, the silver cable. So at that price point, you you cannot find any other you know silver cable in the market right now because the price of the silver cable is super high. Okay. But we are trying to provide that to our customer at, a, at an affordable price, which is many of our customers could enjoy it. So I'm guessing that here, Fire is trying to aim at the very high end in years, maybe even from companies that maybe have released 1,000 USD yeah, in right. years. And to give that sort of very high-end performance, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And can you tell us a bit more about maybe the accessories? I mean, how many are we gonna get? Many tips? I mean, you mentioned that yeah. the cable is very high-end. Yeah. Uh, as the as as F5, FH5, we will have like like 12 pairs of the EFTs, and you can also find a case inside it. Uh, we also have one only one cable with it, but you can buy from like different like upgraded cable from us. We also included the filter. We have three filter for low low uh, frequency, mid frequency and high frequency. You can change it for your own preference. Springfit has been come contacting us uh, and asked for uh, cooperation and we are thinking about to add this one in the package of the FH5, FH7. So for this one you can, you know, it's the best EFS in the market right now, or one of the best EFS in the market right now. Uh, for the retail price, it will cost about 18 US dollar, but we include it in the package. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The Q5S, the new, the new release. Yeah. Tell us uh, what maybe differentiates it from the Q5S, and what are the main features of of the product? I mean, why should someone? Is considered by the Q5S. So, uh, compared to the old Q5, we we've been changing the design a little bit. As you can see, you you can see the indicator on the side, and also the power button. In the past, we have the power button around here, and you have to press it. But right now, it's like it's not. You can open it and turn the uh, turn up or turn low the value easily. So it's way more convenient to operate. It. We've been using the new amplifier module here, so which you can see is the uh, 3.5, 2.2 balance output, and 4.4 output, all in one. So we, from the OQ5, we also upgraded the CP, uh, the DAC chip from 44, AK4490 to AK4493. Okay. So which means it will have better sounds. And right now it could support like, uh, up to 768 giga kilohertz and 32 bit which is much better than the OQ5.
I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, something that um, some customers might say is that, like, what differentiated this from, like, an, sorry, uh, from an M11? Mm -hmm. I see it straight away that, for example, DSD 512, for example, is supported. So this gives for much more high resolution audio files, right? Yeah, that's right. And you can use it with your phone. It's uh, MFI certified, or you can use it with your computer at ease. No problem. That's no problem. Also, we have been upgrading the Bluetooth uh, connection. Right now, it could work as a Bluetooth receiver, which could support LDAR, APT, XHD, which would be good for you to you know take it around with your phone. Also, um, so you would recommend for Android customers to use directly Bluetooth. LDAC, um, APTX, HD, many codecs are supported, right? Yes, it could also work with some Android phones, but we cannot test all the Android phones on the market. But we, uh, if you got a chance, you can try it out. Uh, most of the phone on the market should be compatible with the Q5s. Okay, yeah. so much, uh, much of the models are compatible, but yeah. the ones that are not just use Bluetooth because this uses actually Bluetooth yeah. five and uh, yeah. uh, multiple codec compatibility. So. Basically, the point is that if someone wants to improve the quality of his phone, mm -hmm. if they have a high-end Android phone, yeah. this is going to improve, improve it massively, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, that's, that, that's perfect. When is it going to be launched? Uh, uh, this one should be coming out like, in June. Yeah, in so June. it should be around the same time as the oh, M5, okay. which is the, our next part. Yeah. Okay. This is a bit cheeky, but how will you actually compare it, I mean, with the, the competition, right? I mean, there are some strong competitors around. I mean, I think you have court, but I'm guessing that the difference is that they don't have Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, for our product, it's more versatile and it's at a much affordable prices. Because at that price, our product has much more functionalities. So I think it might be a good, good product for people who want more function, like including the, yeah, Bluetooth function and it has so much more output here so yeah. I mean it's a good choice for customers because I see that of course something that it has that the M11 doesn't have that we talked before is that this one has actually optical out so yeah, you're right. um, very important if you actually want to connect it to a very good high-end DAC yeah. and stuff like that yeah right, right. Okay. okay and in terms of amplification what can this drive for this one, it's even bigger than the M11. So uh, even the M11 could do most of the headphones on the market. I would say that this one could easily handle most of them on the market right now. So it, should, it shouldn't be any problem to try any big headphone. Okay. Yeah. So basically, connect this to your phone and then just drive whatever, yeah. whatever you want. Also connect it to your computer and you have a great sound card. Yeah. yeah. Um, for this one, it has the like for this one, it's like you can consider uh, comparing to our product. You can consider this one as the BTR3 with the player function. So when it's using as the Bluetooth receiver, it could support LDAC when doing as a receiver, which our competitor does not have. So this is one of its strength and advantage. And also, it could be used as a USB DAC which could be used with your phone and your computer. So, which means you have the Bluetooth receiver and the USB DAC and the player function all in one. And it costs only about 100 euro. Okay, so basically, uh, a customer wants to uh, improve the sound quality of their phone, they can use the Bluetooth functionality, yeah. use LDAC, APTXG, whatever they have. Yeah. Also, they can connect it by cable. Yeah, right. Uh, it's going to be compatible with many phones that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And also, then they want to connect it to your computer, works as a DAC as well. Yes. And then they want to run, uh, wanna, or want to go on the go to listen to great sound music, they have that as well. Yeah. One interesting thing is that we are not making this product for only player or Bluetooth receiver. We want to make it, uh, make it a product that you want to carry in your life. Let's say that we have the clip included in the package, which you can use it as a Bluetooth receiver and click it on your search, and you can use it. And we are also planning to, you know, uh, releasing the watch, watch strap, which you can wear it on your, your wrist and use it as a watch. 
uh, you can see here in the function you can recording the step so which means you can carry it around and do sports when you're in the gym or going outside go hike, hiking something like that it should be a lifestyle product and not just a player or a bluetooth receiver okay yeah very, very good um, and also in terms of uh, memory card I think you mentioned that uh, two terabytes support. yeah uh, right now on the market it only has the 5 trail gigabyte but theoretically it could support up to two terabyte okay. so we don't actually have the card to test so but theoretically it could support it